any uh, uh, NLU tool. Uh, I think API at AI is a great one to go use, but really, uh, really the main goal is to convince you that rolling your own is going to be a very expensive endeavor to go do. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I work at Google and I work on the Google Assistant team. So it's, I think, um, one of the newer bots in the market, but it's one that we've worked for years, really, on the base technology that went into it. Um, and, you know, you can go play with that today in Allo, uh, uh, Nexus phone, or if you've already ordered it, you can get it at Google Home. They shipped yesterday, so it's pretty exciting. Um, and what we're, what we're really doing with the, with the Google Assistant there, our mission is to help, you get th help users get things done. Um, in their world. And if we think deeply about that, how are we going to help users get things done? Like, there's only so many how tall is Obama queries that we can uh, answer. What, what's going to help users get things done is helping them order a pizza, getting a taxi ride, finding what's going on in the movies, understanding what their org chart is at their company. That's what getting things done really means. And so to do that, we have to enable an ecosystem of services. Uh, and so to enable that ecosystem of services, we, we need to engage with you, with uh, people building these bots, uh, to get them to plug in to the Google Assistant in every surface that's going to be. And as you might guess, uh, Google has a few platforms. We're going to make sure that, is, that surface goes, goes everywhere. So really, high-level goal, we want, that, we want that to be everywhere. But we you know, did take a look at where the state of the tools are today um, and the state of bots. And frankly, we have a long way to go for there to be really conversational. Um, and that led us as a group to the decision to go acquire API at AI. Um, and so we did that back in September. Uh, and we think, we think that's really important because uh, we want to make it accessible for normal developers to be able to build conversational interfaces that don't suck. So that's our, that's our bar. Um, so API Today was founded, um, or first launched back in September of 2014. But I think what's really interesting is it com comes from the same heritage we do in terms of trying to build a assistant. Um, they had the most popular assistant in Android. Um, and a lot of their learnings come from actually building a bot that scales and is general purpose and uh, has to handle a lot of these sorts of things. So it's kind of the lessons learned into API today are very real world. And I think you'll see that expressed in the tool as we get going. <coughs> okay. Um, and then... Uh, the talk was supposed to be about what, what sucks about API and AI and what's good. Um, luckily, we, we, we fixed, I think, the first two biggest problems yesterday. There's still a lot more, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but the, fir uh, the first two, um, one is we significantly expanded the free tier. So we've made it now, I think, accessible for anybody here to be able to go build production scale bot based on API and AI for free. Um, if you're going to use more than one QPS, come talk to us. Let's make sure that everything will work out well for you. But generally, um, no query limit, no public. Before you had to uh, only have public bots. Now they can be public bots. Um, and we, in addition, if you're interested, we have enterprise level support for that, backed with our um, the same team that does our Google Cloud platform. So if you are enterprise, you want a really strong SLA, we can do that for you as well. Um, and the other big thing we la launched yesterday was rich messaging support for bots. So if you want the uh, buttons and uh, suggestion chips and better tech support, we now have all that um, baked in. But at a high level, kind of what are we, what are we about with API at AI? Um, so I didn't mention, but I'm relatively new to the space, so I need things kind of really like break it down for me. Like let's make, let's make it really clear about what we do. Really what API at AI is about, and generally um, most of these NLU tools are about, is taking the huge, beautiful vagaries of the way we talk in human speech and turn that into methods with parameters, right? As a developer, what I want is I just like, which, which method is it and like what are the parameters to, to that method? And once I have that, I can go write my code as a developer. But this like understanding what humans say, and the example I want to use with you today is 
like, what are the ways in which people can order pizza? Has anybody written a pizza ordering bot before? Okay, there's a, so you're going to be my tester. A couple of you have. Like, it's really, really complex. I don't know if you appreciate, you, uh, other than you two would appreciate the huge variety of, of ways humans talk. Um, I think it, I, I love the regex example that Dan gave. Like, that is impossible. You cannot build regex um, to account for this. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a demo of, of this uh, in API to AI. But before I do, a couple of things about what API to AI does do for you and doesn't do for you. I think at a high level, um, somebody made this comment, like, you can't build a great bot in five minutes. That is true. You can't. So, like, gar garbage in, garbage out. Like, if you don't understand the domain, you know, like you, if you don't understand pizza ordering, like, you're not going to get a great pizza ordering bot out of this. Um, so, uh, you really have to understand that super, super well. API today is a generic tool, not a specific tool for your, for your industry and your vertical. Um, API today doesn't do any fulfillment, like in, in the sense that it doesn't help you actually write your business logic in any way. If you don't have the APIs for doing what you want to do, it won't, it won't help. All it does is understand the human language and map that to, to API calls. Um, we don't do any hosting of that fulfillment. We do host the NLU for you um, in, a, in, a, in a nice way, in a seamless way for you in a SaaS model. Um, we, we do very limited analytics. Most of our big customers end up needing to use a separate analytics package to actually understand the flows uh, through their system. Um, and it, it doesn't have what I would call rich team support. Um, so like if you have like 10, 20 people working on your bot, um, like that is not impossible with API today, but like it's an area of growth for us. And um, we think of it as a feature of API to AI that as you change anything in the tool, it, you're, it's live that second as soon as you change it. Um, so, but that's not always great. Sometimes maybe you want to test it before you make it live. So that's also something to be aware of. So anyway, there is some, some of what we do and don't do. So I'm going to do something very dangerous now. Um, I have done the five-minute bot that's all sucks, and I'm going to show you kind of how that's written, and then we're going to maybe, maybe possibly improve it. But I'm going to let you try it out right now, uh, a set of, and especially my pizza experts here. Keep in mind, it's the five-minute version of the, of the bot, um, but you can start exploring it, so feel free. And as I mentioned, everything is live instantly, so as we improve it here, hopefully you can, you can see that. Give everyone another two seconds. OK. Uh, so, so here's the basic API to AI tool. Um, and what we can do is uh, I, I notice, we, we noticed from the Google Assistant and, and actually before that with Google Search that um, people like to be very conversational, even with a pizza ordering bot. P people like to start with hi, right? So uh, right out of the box, you know, how do you handle these sorts of, we call small talk. You know, so people say, hi, or how are you, what's up. Uh, so that's a good one. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, all of these, if you understand this, we'll, we'll be in this little test console most of the time. Uh, this is what the user said, and this is what we end up saying back to it. If you, if you have the experience on your phone there, you could be trying that out. Um, and you notice it's telling us what intent is being called. Um, and you can see what we have here is a whole set of domains. Um, and I'm showing the small talk domain. Um, and what I can do is actually I have like a hundred or so questions that I can just go and do simple fulfillment. So when people say, hi, what should I respond? And you can come in here and customize it and start to define this. We talked earlier today about personality in the bot. What is your personality of your bot? Even if it's just a pizza ordering bot, like it should have some tonality to it, right? And so this is where you can do that. Super, super simple. Um, and you can give a series of answers, and we round robin through them. One of the things we've noticed from Google Assistant is literally just having five different answers and round robin through them gives a lot more um, variance in the conversation. So right out of the box, um, you get that. And the other thing I showed, too, by accident, is every one of your bots 
Um, and it probably needs to handle unexpected input, right? That's just going to happen as well. So if you just say anything random to the bot, uh, then you'll get, you, you, you know, you get some kind of, um, sorry, I don't understand. So how does that work? Well, if we go back to the intents, there's a default fallback intent. And then we've given you, again, a variety of responses. This is a, a project right out of the box. Variety of, pro, uh, of answers. Of course, you can delete these, add whatever ones make sense to you, uh, so that they're, so you can kind of keep that conversation going and, and keep the user engaged. Okay, so that's all right out of the box. Now, uh, what I did is define exactly one intent called pizza ordering. And the way this works is you start by typing what the user says. So if you're like, okay, I'm going to order pizza, what might a user say to order pizza? Well, the first thing they might say is, I want pizza. Uh, we'll come back to that one in a second. Turns out that's a harder one. Um, sometimes they'll actually say, I want a deep dish crust pizza with cheese, right? Um, and they'll give you kind of all the data that you need. And what we've done is actually recognize, as you type it, we recognize that, oh, small is the size. That's, that's the entity size. And um, deep dish, that's the entity crust. And cheese, that's the entity topping. So it knew those because um, earlier I created these, let me just make sure I saved it. Um, I create these entities, and these are super simple, right? So we have an API, you can programmatically stick these in there. These are really simple, um, but you can see kind of what I've done. Uh, and all of them, all of the entities here are equally, equally simple in terms of toppings. But what, what is interesting is, oh, did I show this one? Um, what is most interesting, I think, is the um, ability to give uh, synonyms. So people might say large, or they might say the big one, or you know, 16 slices, or like, what are the, what are the ways in which people say that? You can encode all those as different synonyms, and then your code deals with large, right? Like you turn it into the canonical language. So anyway, it takes all of those. Um, we go back to our pizza ordering, and um, kind of is able to match that. And that uh, gets you to being able to do things like, whoo, you know, I want a large cheese pizza. Um, and notice it, it, it was able to, to know that that is, it did the intent classification as you saw earlier. It's ordering pizza. And notice it's starting to fill in the values. Look, I've got size and I've got uh, toppings, cheese and mushrooms. So very interesting. It actually, you, you said you wanted cheese and mushrooms. So we actually took those toppings and took a, a list of them and turned it into an array. That's another thing that's kind of a little bit challenging to go do. Uh, that launched yesterday as well. Um, but notice the next question it's asking is, oh, what crust? Because uh, the user didn't say the crust. So here we can say, you know, make that a deep dish. And so now we have um, everything that we needed. So it actually says the response. So I didn't show that. Down here, I've just given some textual responses. Obviously, you don't just want to tell them that. You would probably confirm it, and then you would write a method. Um, and, and this shows you the JSON blob that we end up passing you uh, with all the parameters and stuff filled in. So you just write a method with all those parameters. So what I showed so far is that you can write these queries. We parse them out. I showed list. Um, and I showed if you're missing any of these, kind of we reprompt. Let, let's go through the, uh, this one again. Uh, if you just say, I want a pizza, it'll say what size. Sometimes, you know, if you prompt for what size, what we've seen is users will often uh, answer to the question what size, they often answer cheese <laughs> to the question what size. And you know what You know what a human would do? They would check the box that says cheese and then they would ask again what size, right? Because you, you don't want to go the way, you want to go the way the customer is thinking about it, not the way. 
And so that's exactly what we've done. Down here, we've got toppings cheese, right? Um, and now we go back to what size, what's left. So we kind of keep up with what, try to go with the flow of that, of that conversation. Um, okay, and then the last thing I wanted to show you here is you might say something like, um, I'm hungry, uh, or, or um, Trying to find, trying to find one that doesn't work. Uh, surely one of you did something that doesn't work. Um, so we have this uh, training. Who got one that doesn't work? Oh, how about this? Can I order a pizza? Right. So that didn't that uh, that didn't work. So what you can do is you can actually go and come in here and assign. Like if somebody says large to us, that should have gone to the pizza ordering domain. So we can actually come in and say, oh, that's pizza ordering, and uh, save that. And this one, did we do that one already? Right, all these are the ones I did. OK, so what you can do um, is if something fails, then yeah, you can come in. And this is kind of what AI people would tell you is training. So now if you come in and say large, it should notice uh, large. It went to the pizza ordering intent, and now it's, a, oh, you want a large pizza? Great. What crust do you want on it? It kind of launches you through that dialogue tree. And again, you can answer pepperoni to that size and kind of uh, work your way through it. Okay? That's your high-level speedy, speedy tour of API to AI. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, so any questions? Yes? I can repeat if you want. Uh, so it wasn't clear there, um, the constraint validation you're doing, where you have to fill all the constraints before ordering the pizza, is that being done within API.ai, or is that being done externally as part of the dialogue flow? What's the... What, what do you mean by constraint validation? You well, mean so like if I, toppings and whatnot? Yeah, if I provide topping but I'm missing a crust, or if I crust and I'm missing yeah, a topping, yeah. is Sorry that... Sorry about that, so uh, went over this too quickly. Thank you. So the way this works is... It's done, it's done with, so first off, it's done within API.ai. Um, uh, it, what, what we do is recognize the, the query string, um, like I want a pizza, and then we've said these arguments are required. Here's what you have to get. So I check those off as you have to get the, I could have other stuff that if you give it, right, like my coupon code is 79, like, you don't have to have that, but if you do have that, uh, please pass it. Um, and then I can come in and, and if it's not provided, I can define like four prompts, like here's the kind of thing you should say to access to get that from the user. Cool, thank you. Other questions, comments? Yes. Yes, that is a great question. Um, so, uh, uh, I mean, I think in a more real example, like, so, so you can get, like, cheese crust. We'll, f we'll figure that out. If the user actually says cheese crust, if they just say cheese without any context, then you can do a disambiguation flow um, in a more, like, a more real world example. It wouldn't be as simple as this. Like, well, in, in real world examples, we see people have hundreds of intents, not, like, one. Um, is that? Yeah. Other questions? Okay, cool. I'll help us get it back on track. Thanks.